this is a PC. If it was not already obvious, I love computers. But this is a very sad computer, as it does not work. Recently, I put an ad on Craigslist telling people that I would fix their computers, not for free, come on now, but at a significantly reduced price from what a computer store would. Primarily because I am not a licensed computer technician and I am doing this for fun. This kind gentleman responded. And now it is time to fix his personal computer. Now the first step of any troubleshooting process is to duplicate the problem. Mm. This gentleman said that his computer had a kernel error. Now he did not specify what that meant, whether the computer would post, what that exactly did to his system. However, if it is a kernel error, that is part of the operating system. And therefore, there is a good chance that his Windows needs to be reinstalled. If you remember these PS2 connectors, there's a good chance that you're a lot older than I am. With everything plugged in, it is time to see if the computer will boot. Okay, good sign. Oh, it goes here. Let's display the boot menu, get into the BIOS just to see. Okay, I suppose start Windows normally. I see no reason not to. Ah, Windows 7. Okay, so this is most likely what the man was talking about. Windows failed to start. A recent hardware or software change might be the cause. To fix the problem, insert your Windows installation disk and restart your computer. Choose your language setting. Next, repair your computer. If you do not have this disk, contact your system administrator or computer manufacturer for assistance. Hmm. Ah, Windows failed to load because the kernel is missing or corrupt. Yep, this guy was not lying. This is a problem. And there's a good chance that we're just going to have to refresh the operating system. The only problem being that Windows 7 is old enough that uh, getting a boot medium for that would be difficult. So I'm going to call this man and ask if he is okay with Windows 10. I have the man's permission and we are okay to reinstall Windows 10 instead of the included Windows 7, which should theoretically run better anyway. Since it is a problem with the operating system, obviously a reinstall of Windows is necessary. So I'm going to take my Windows boot medium, which you can create yourself. I will show you how to do so. And put that on the floor. Insert that into your computer while it is still on. And as it will not start, it is okay to actually push and hold the power button to turn it off. Obviously, this is not recommended if you are able to manually shut down the computer in software, but since it will not boot, this is fine. While opening up the computer is not strictly necessary, I want to do so just to make sure that everything is operating normally. Although, don't watch me, because first, in any case, you should unplug the system and push the power button for a few seconds to drain any extra power. Now, most computers nowadays have thumb screws as compared to actual screws, but this works as well. In fact, a lot of Optiplex computers, you can simply take them off, but this has screws. So we shall do so. What do we have? 80 plus bronze power supply. That's actually not that bad. Here is the disk drive, which looks to be taking up most of the system. Hello, RAM. 
How much are you? DDR3, 2 gigabytes of RAM. That is nothing. And this CPU cooler is absolutely tiny. What kind of processor is this running? An AMD E300 dual core processor. Hmm. I've never heard of the E300 dual core processor, but I'm guessing it's quite bad. But this guy said that he was simply playing games on his computer. Also, that hard drive location is interesting. Let me see if I can get at it. In order to pull the front panel off, most of the time these clips you have to take off. And usually... Oh no, you'd have to unscrew this. I'm not getting at that. Well, everything looks to be in order here. It's so I'm going to close it up and show you the process of reinstalling Windows 10. With your boot DVD inside the system, it is time to turn the power button on once again. And it should auto-detect it as a boot drive, but just in case, I'm going to push F12 to bring up the boot menu and manually select the DVD. Because this DVD is a boot medium, it should be able to boot from it. Oh, it appears we need a password to do that. For obvious reasons, I will not say what the password was. However, sometimes that is necessary to get into these boot managers. Now, unfortunately, there are two options here that work. As you can see, there are three boot options. UEFI, ATAP, -A something, DVDA, and DVDA. The difference between these, quite frankly, I don't really know. Though given that this says UEFI, I can guess that this may be the BIOS, though I don't know. This is a hard drive. Why do I know? Because it doesn't say DVD on it. So, we're going to try one of the DVD options and see what happens. Yes. Press any key to boot from CD or DVD. I usually press enter. Oop, the Windows 10 logo. We are off to a good start. Wow, this system is slow. It took me probably a good five minutes to get into this screen, but it is running properly. And on that note, it is time to set up his new windows. Given that we are in the United States, I'm going to assume that he speaks English. And uh, unlike a BIOS, this boot manager uses, well, this isn't the boot manager. This is, whatever this is, this Windows setup uses the mouse. So technically you can hit the repair computer button that was here on the bottom left, but I found that if you create this boot drive yourself, that option does not work. So I'm just going to skip that step and entirely reinstall the operating system. Ah, now this is a relatively important step where you need to have been prepared in some cases. If you have a pre-built computer, there is a good chance that there is a sticker on the case of your system that has your product key on it. However, if you built your own system and received your product key in a different way, then you probably should have written it down because if it is in your operating system and your operating system is corrupt, then you don't have a product key. Now you can click, I don't have a product key, and you can continue to use Windows, but it will have annoying activate Windows watermark, and there will be some blocked features. Again, with this older system, it's going to take a bit to do all of these steps because the processor is so bad, but the product key is inserted and hopefully blurred. Editor, that's on you. But now that the product key is inserted, it should ask us which version of Windows to activate though I will wait for it to do so. 
so that I do not put the cart before the horse, so to say. Ah, yes, Microsoft Terms and Conditions. Read these very carefully. Oh, yes, look at all that. Very important information. Yup, I read that. Next. Yes, this upgrade will not work. I have tried it before, and it says you need a proper boot disk in order to use this function. So, you install Windows only. Ah, now since this was already a drive with Windows on it, it will need to be erased. Technically, these partitions, you can leave them here, but I, since this is going to wipe the hard drive anyway, will delete all of them. And to do that, you hit the delete key. And after about seven years, it deletes the partition. Then you hit delete on the other one. Another 10 years later, and that has been deleted. And now for the primary partition. It's been seven years, but it finally deleted the partition. Now it's time to press new. Size, it defaults to the highest amount possible. Apply to ensure that all Windows features work correctly. Windows might create additional partitions for system files. That's fine. Since this is designed to install Windows, it will optimize this drive for running Windows, which in some cases would be bad. If you wanted to truly delete all of the partitions, you would do this differently. But, since we are deleting them in order to install Windows, this is fine. All of my grandchildren have died of old age. But finally, finally, it is done. And apparently, Windows cannot be installed on drive partition 3. Oh, because we want to put it on... Oh. Oh, it, no, no, wait, oh, format, I presume we need to format, oh yeah, important files, no, there's not, there's nothing on it, I presume we might need to format this partition, oh god, this may take a while, oh, Formatting it does not appear to have worked. Windows cannot be installed to this disk. The disk may fail soon. If other disks are available, install Windows to another location. This was a worst case scenario. This means that not only is his hard drive no, not only is his operating system bad, the entire disk is bad. And this is the proof. I'll have to see what he wants to do about this. Because you can get a 64 gigabyte solid state drive for around $14 with 64 gigabytes on it. That might be his best option, assuming that he does not need to store that much data, but I'll have to see what he wants. I couldn't get my screen capture working, so you're stuck with this crappy phone. Anyway, this is a 64 gigabyte solid state drive. And this is what I'm going to buy this man as his hard drive is not working. I highly recommend getting a solid state drive if you need to upgrade your system or if your hard drive is bad, if you're going to spend money, due to the fact that they are significantly faster and, in all honesty, not much more expensive. The only problem being that this being 2.5 inches will require an adapter case in order to fit in the computer. But I happen to have one, so that, at least for me, is a non-issue. I lied. He is not getting a solid state drive, he is getting this random laptop hard drive that I happen to have 
lying around. This blue thing is the bracket that I described earlier though because this is the same 2.5 inch drive, which for comparison, let me find the three and a half inch hard drive. See this bracket that it's held in would normally hold a drive about this size. So this bracket is needed in order to put the smaller, usually these are solid state drives, but I pull these drives out of computers. This bracket is needed in order to get them to fit in standard hard drive cages. Now, if this was a normal computer, then I would simply put this back and call it good. But since it is a low profile build, it requires a bit of a special touch. So I'm going to show how it is reassembled. These wires, they go there. These do not. It's out of the way enough. And this would go back right about here-ish. Here-ish? Here-ish. I'm not going to actually put it in because I don't want to do that. What you want to do is attach the necessary SATA cables. So I've got that there. This is the SATA data cable. That's not close enough. This is a bit of an awkward angle, but it should work a little further than I'd like to stretch that cable. And now for the SATA power cable, which is here and goes this way. And there is the disk drive. Now the hard drive needs to be put in, if I can ever, oh, that's a long SATA cable. Again, SATA data, right here, and SATA power, right here. You can tell by the notches which way it goes. And then, reinstall there. And my screwdriver is somewhere that I will reinstall the screws with. Oh. You can see on the front here that there are three screw holes where this needs to be reattached. And I will do just so. Not in this video because I can't do it one-handed. And with these screws reattached, it is now time to put this front panel back on. Generally, there's little clips down here and little clips up here. The clips down there line up with some holes. And then the clips up here snap into place. And now it is time to reinstall the back plate, which works very similarly on most computers. You line it up somehow. You slide it, and then you screw it. Generally, you can get these started with your fingers. And then use a screwdriver to finish. And with that, the computer is reassembled with a power connection and connection from the peripherals, from the mouse and keyboard, and the TV that I need to plug it into. It is ready to reboot. With the computer entirely reassembled, I simply repeated the steps before to reinstall Windows, and the system is now working, albeit slowly, though much quicker than before. As if your hard drive is dying, I didn't know this, but apparently that can make a computer slow. Who'd have guessed?
But one thing still remains. You still need to know how to make a Windows boot medium. I'll be right back once I figure out how to screen capture with proper audio. Yeah, that didn't work. You get this again. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to search in whatever browser you use and search Windows Boot Media. Typing one-handed is hard, believe me. And now you can click Create Installation Media for Windows. Evidently, you actually can create installation media for Windows 7, which is odd, but whatever. Oh, perhaps not. Regardless, for Windows 10, select Windows 10, and then download tool now, though evidently Microsoft.com is functioning slightly poorly. There we go. It will prompt you to download Media Creation Tool. However, I have already done that, so I'm not going to do this myself. Here it is for me. Click it. It will ask if you want to make changes to this computer. Yes, it's Microsoft. They've already made changes to your computer. And quite frankly, from here on out, the process is quite self-explanatory, but I will still run through it, as this video is already aimed at the uninitiated. So... I may as well make this as plain as possible. After this, read these terms. Yep, read them real good, except... And you'll wait again. And now... Theoretically, you can upgrade this PC now, but quite frankly, I've never used that, so I don't know what it does. Create installation media. These are the recommended settings for this PC, but quite frankly, they are the recommended settings for all PCs. The only thing that might be different is, well, I guess if you don't want to speak English, or if you want to install a 32-bit system which, unless you know what you're doing, I do not recommend. You can create a USB flash drive or a DVD boot medium. I have tried the USB flash drive methodology. Quite frankly, it doesn't work as well as I thought it would. So usually I go with a DVD. And then it will prompt you to download this windows.iso file, which again, I already have. So I am just going to close it. And actually it's right there. And then you will burn this to a blank DVD, which would be as simple as burn disk image to, well, I have two DVD drives, so I have to select which one is which, but if you have a DVD drive, put a blank one in it and then select it, verify disk after burning, and burn. As simple as that. And then you will have a Windows boot medium just like me. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day. We spend our lives running from that which we desire with such backwards means of existence. How can we manage to justify anything? Our world is filled with contradiction with things, people that do things, no, do everything against what should be. Help me, help me know what this world 
really is. Oh, you would never understand, would you? Seven.